1972 Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, this is an FJ40 Land Cruiser. Uh, my dad picked this up for a steal. And I'm just in this video, and this is, uh, I'm just going through and I'm recording everything, documenting everything, in addition to all the pictures that I took earlier. So this is this video is mainly for us to go back and look at whenever we're putting it back together. So follow through, continue to watch it if you want, but that's why this video is going to be so long. But first, before I walk around uh, all of this, I do want to say sorry for the video stability problems. I didn't bring all my camera stuff with me when I came home to visit this time. I had intended to just for doing video of this and I just, I forgot a lot of stuff. So I just have my GoPro. So I can at least put this in 4K, um, but I had intended to bring my gimbal and everything for keeping the video stable. He's pulling this all the way down to the frame, um, but today uh, while I'm home for, for the holidays, I'm gonna be pulling the front end off of it. Um, and then in a couple days, we're gonna be pulling the engine out and then he's gonna roll the frame in. He's got a sandblaster and everything, so he's gonna sandblast the frame, strip it all the way down. So the overall condition of the body, you know, there's big rust spots and there's matching rust spots on the on the opposite side, on the passenger side. Uh, the one on the passenger side's a little bit worse than this. Get around to the back, and there's a few, quite a few rust places here that go all the way through into the uh, into the cab, and also in the wheel well. Uh, and there's a guy that he found on Craigslist that has replacement, better condition top, so he's not too concerned about the condition here. I've got some scratches all down the side of it. The glass is in mostly good shape, with the exception of there's a big crack in the windshield. This fender has been replaced here, so this is the regular red. Um, and when I looked up the colors of this, uh, so there two greens that it's most closely um, resembles is there's a uh, the Breathe Green, B-R-E-A-T-H-E -E, Green, and then also a Judson Green. This looks more like the Breathe Green. Just, uh, it's so faded I can't tell. I'm kind of wondering if it's, if it's the Judson Green and it's darker. This is the rest of the, so this is the back. You see the back door is faded pretty bad. And this door handle doesn't look original. I'm pretty sure they didn't come like that. It looks like it's plumber's tape. And then, what is this? Oh! That is cool. <laughs> oh, let's see if the other one works. I might leave those out just when my dad gets home. We're gonna be like, look what I found. Cause I don't think he found this. This is cool. And the hinge works really well. Just lock it in. That is cool. And then the grill, obviously somebody spray painted the whole grill black. Um, this is supposed to be white. And the rest of this is green. Oh, I sprayed some um, PB blaster on on all the bolts because I'm I'll be taking the side, this side, and then this grill off, which looks like it's just unbolting bolts under here, and then on the inside underneath the headlight, and then the fender just comes off like normal fenders do. I'm not going to video any of that because I'm going to try to take this apart before it gets dark. This looks like it's been replaced. It's the way that it's bolted up. It's bolted up there, and then it's not bolted up here. Uh, I don't know if the fender came from a slightly different model year FJ, and that's, that maybe that's why it doesn't bolt up straight. So that'll bolt in there. Yep. So that uh, so that bolts down there. So this is supposed to sit like this whenever the radiator is all done. So this is part of the radiator support that goes in, and it bolts into that bracket just onto the left side of the radiator, or onto the left side vehicle left side. There's one on this side that's a radiator support that goes down to right in front of the bottom of the battery. Uh, this is the ignition coil, and that's where the ignition coil bolts to the side of the head. Looks like the firing order on this is one, five, three, six, two, four. One, five, three, six, two, four. And that's considering it spins clockwise. And this is the charcoal canister. Uh, and that's the vacuum line that goes over. I, I followed this vacuum line. It goes all the way over and it goes over that. Okay, there's fuel pump location uh, where the fuel pump feeds the carburetor. And that's where the fuel line comes in there. So that's mounted, that's mounted there. Uh, oh, and this. So there are, so there's the cable, the throttle cable that comes out and goes to the carburetor, or is that a choke? I can look at that, I can look at that later, but that, that comes out and that goes there, onto the, uh, the passenger side of the carburetor. And then the jump seats, also considering the age, they're in okay condition, they're not all ripped up horribly. And then this, this seat isn't even torn. Uh, actually, correction, it's got a little tear right there. 
but the back of it back of it's still in okay shape I don't know what his plans are for uh, redoing that but gas tank we'll know the condition of it whenever we get whenever we get this thing out but see it's it's uh, rusted down on the bottom and they have to get a hole that goes through there um, and the whole upholstery is gone you can see this little bit that's left here but that's all gone you can see where it used to be glued in from the factory and there's a cover that's missing for that interior light there's a weird bubble there too not sure how that got there so this is going to be quite a project for him but I know my dad is he's you know he said he's going to work on it here and there over the next few years and I'll work on it with him whenever I whenever I come visit uh, but opening the door so there's problems here with the um, with the window cranks the elevators whenever they get up to a certain point where like where that window is at uh, the the window crank feels like it slips a tooth so I don't know and he said this one is the same way he's already pulled this one out and he's just got it held like that you just can't go up anymore it just it slips so hey if somebody knows any quick remedies quick fixes for this I was looking at how to take this apart and it looks like it's got these little uh, rivets in the hammer rivets holding in the back side of the window crank so and that's the edge of one right there the engine does not run um, it's not seized when you write down it doesn't have a battery in it uh, but the engine does turn over it just doesn't start and run so so I noticed this is pretty bad shape the little duct that goes on uh, that heater but looks like this gas line is cracked a little bit on where it slips on gas tank so I got a little little bit of damage there so that doesn't seal well so the tire carrier is gone uh, so there's the four bolt holes here that I believe the tire carrier mounts to and then the tire carrier sits here and then there's the door that opens up and over on this side you see it's missing the the side view mirror uh, the air filter has gone and the whole assembly and the tubes that go here so that's all missing another thing side steps are missing I'm not sure where this uh, where the rear mount mounts up to I was looking at that I was kind of wondering if it just attaches to the body right there and that's why uh, both of the the side steps are missing and um, you have this rust spot here so I'm gonna look at that and see if I could see what the original side step looks like and what it mounted to because this one comes off the frame and there's no frame mount back here so I would imagine that it comes off the body uh, and then going over some of the condition of the wiring there's a blue wire with a black stripe which I believe is the same one that's over here blue wire with a black stripe uh, it runs into the blower motor uh, but that wire has completely come out of the housing and that's like the copper wire is here so it can it can arc on something other wires I don't know what this is if somebody watching knows what this this wire is but coming out of the harness here there's it looks like two wires but I really can't tell because they're they're really cooked blue with a red stripe or orange stripe yeah so that's blue with an orange stripe I'm gonna look up and see what that goes to and then there's also this green wire with a white stripe that doesn't go to anything uh, now this was it looks like it's been burnt like scorched the whole thing like it got too close to the exhaust but the rest of the wire harness is in pretty good condition and it's not too much tapping into that happened there's a connector here don't know what this goes to the wires on this are solid blue and then blue with a yellow stripe uh, this connector is a little short and then I'm just gonna trace out the rest of the wire harness um, so this part of the video I think I've pretty much done all the walking around that I can do I'm just going to trace out the wire harness and just walk through and talk about that location so that we know how everything lays whenever we're uh, putting it all back together. But, uh, so harness comes here out of the interior and this is the part that's broken that's, uh, that's ripped up. So the wire harness runs down it splits off into three little screw uh, screw on connectors so it's going to be little eyelets that the screw goes through. Looks like those wire colors are a white with a red stripe that goes onto the top left one white with a green stripe it goes onto the bottom left one 
um, vehicle left. So this is top left, vehicle left, white with a red stripe. Uh, bottom left, white with a green stripe. And then it's white with a blue stripe. This that's green with a white stripe that's broken off. I'm not sure what that goes to. I don't see anything nearby that it would connect to. And you got another spot in the harness down here that splits off and goes to the high beam connector under the inside, uh, under the bottom of the clutch pedal. And then this connector here that is uh, melted off. The three prong connector that is blue with a red stripe, blue with a white. But these wires here that go under that plug. So this three prong plug that's pressing with my finger. Uh, so this is blue with a red stripe. It goes into that part that my fingernail is touching, bottom left. Uh, black with a yellow stripe, which goes to that top part there. And then I believe this is solid blue. I don't see another color on that. Just solid blue. It goes into that remaining one on the bottom right. So that's where those wires go. And you follow down the harness a little bit more, it splits off and goes to the alternator. And then we have the fattest wire, which goes onto this screw here. And that's white with a blue stripe. And then we have it where it goes over here. And that is white with a either black or dark blue stripe, I can't tell. And then white with a gold stripe. Uh, okay, so coming down here, a little bit farther down the harness, I have two red color wires. So it's red with a green stripe it looks like and then red with a white stripe those i couldn't clean off very well uh, but they both go into this side marker light and then i have two red wires here um, they come off of the harness here as red white and red with a as red with a white stripe and then red with a green stripe and they go in and they go up to this uh this turn signal so they just come out of the fender there, they're down and up. Uh, and after that, it splits off and goes with the horn and that one is just green wire with a white stripe. And then it goes with the headlights. So you have the yellow wire, it looks like it's yellow with a black stripe, which is kind of strange. I think it's supposed to be white. This Toyota, typical Toyota wiring is white with the black stripe as ground. And this is white with a um, black stripe, I believe. If not, then it does look it's more like yellow. Then you have red with a green stripe and red with a yellow stripe. Uh, so that's that and that's where the harness ends. So it doesn't go anywhere else after that. Um, not sure how it's supposed to be mounted away from this, away from the, the shock, but. And then you have the ground, a oh, very poor ground. This that might actually be while it wasn't running. That's not even, I just pulled it off of my hand. Maybe we'll connect that and try to start it up. Or we rip it apart and then you have the wire that goes onto the starter here so that just looks like it wasn't connected but it was just hanging there so it looks like it goes down to the solenoid this connects to the solenoid part of the starter and these are junk main starter positive all right now following the rest of the wire harness so this was added this red wire that goes into the interior and that probably just goes into there's a uh, there's an oil feed line for oil pressure just under the middle of the dash so that's probably what this goes to and just powers that um, and then <laughs> red ground wire I hate it when people do that but red ground wire and that it's not even factory but that mounts there and then you have the so solenoid uh, so coming out of this part of the firewall you've got a two you know, so you have the black wire with a yellow stripe that goes to the ignition coil. So there's a harness that comes out here, comes out of the uh, out of the firewall and it moves down. It's got these two connectors on it. So one is a four pin connector with two wires going into it and those two wires are blue with a red stripe, red with a looks like a yellow stripe. And then there's this other four pin connector that is green with an orange stripe, white with a red stripe. Those are the two that are facing the camera right now. 
On the back side, behind this yellow-red one, is green. I don't see another color on it. it. Looks like it's solid green. And then green with a yellow stripe on the back side. I think this is supposed to be white with a red stripe because it looks like it's just a tan color. So it looks like it's faded and it's supposed to be white with a red stripe. Uh, so it comes in, so it splits off and it goes up to the uh, to the air box, um, to the fan motor. And that just goes straight into the bottom. I don't feel like it connect, it disconnects anywhere. But that goes through this little hole in the firewall right there. So it doesn't go around the firewall. It goes through it after the wires route down. Um, and these kind of route with it. Oh, these, actually, these that separate, these two, they go down and back. Um, so I can run the wire. I can, I'm going to follow that underneath and see. There's not any wires that go down on the driver's side, but there's wires that go down on the passenger side. But the harness splits off, and then it comes up here. Uh, there's this white wire that goes... Oh, so that goes to the battery. So this is supposed to clip on and go to the battery there. So this is just a quick disconnect. And then you have green with a yellow stripe, green with a white stripe, and another green with a white stripe. That might be the turn signal. Oh wait, no, it's faded. Green with the red stripe. Green with the white. Oh, that red. It's red up there, but it's white down there, so that faded out actually. So it's green with the red stripe. Green with yellow, and then green with white. It's like this is green with the white stripe, so that might be the turn signal. Uh, so this was painted, it looks like. You got a little overspray on it. Uh, but this goes... So it's uh, white, or red with a white stripe, and red with a white stripe. Okay, well, I don't know if they're both like that, but two red with the white stripes that go into a green with a white stripe for the side marker. And then the wire harness continues down, it branches off and goes underneath. Same thing. Looks like this one clamps up here. So the other one was just dangling, so this one clamps up there before it goes in to the turn signal. It's a little grommet in the fender right there. And then the rest of the harness goes down slide this out. Alright, so the harness goes down and then you have another green with a white stripe. I think it's white unless it's faded like the other one did. But that goes down to the horn on the passenger side of the, of the radiator. And then you have red with a green stripe that goes into the very top of the headlight. Um, I think this is white with a black stripe that goes into the other part on the top of the headlight. And then red with a yellow stripe. That back. There's another wire that comes out here by itself underneath the uh, the radiator hose, the heater hose, that goes out and wraps around. Uh, so that goes down, 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 down. Bolts into the block there, uh, straight into the side of the block behind the exhaust port uh, number six, the exhaust runner number six. So I can't see that, but that's where that wire goes down to. I can't even, can't even see it from the angle that I'm at, but it's the only wire in that location. All right, before it gets too dark, I'm gonna follow this part of the harness that goes down. Those wire colors are, so, it goes in red with the yellow stripe, which may be red with the white stripe, I'm not sure. And it comes out as, man, like green or something. I can't even see that. But they come out flipped from what they are when they went in. And then on this side, so those colors come out about the same. Yeah. Get under. 
Okay, so it's not this one. That looks like maybe the brake line that comes out. I can't tell where that goes. Yeah, it looks like it's looks like it's part of the brake line. This other one, if I cannot get dirt in my mouth while I'm doing this, that won't be fun. Bam. Looks like the harness splits off there. And it comes out as maybe the what is this? Maybe the reverse. Uh, this is red. <laughs> Looks like red with the blue stripe. And the same color, I think. Red with the blue stripe. Unless it's red black. I don't know. That could be the reverse. The reverse switch. Got a. Mm. Mud. It looks like a ground location, but I can't tell because there's so much mud caked on it. But it's uh, it's white with a black stripe, which is typical ground wire. And there's two of them side by side. I think that's just a ground location, but it looks like it just connects to the frame. I can't tell. There's so much mud right there. Hey, how about I lay in that dirt that I just knocked loose? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Okay, so this wire goes up and near the gas tank, I think. So I think I'm under that part of the gas tank right now. This wire splits off and goes up and looks like it goes up with the, uh, the gas tank. <laughs> with the gas tank tubes, because those come down here and run the bottom of the frame. Okay, go up, follow the frame, follow the frame, and then this wire this goes up, the tail light here, that's white with a green stripe, and it goes up to here for some reason. Well, that goes down. Anyway, that goes down and across. But we'll be able to see the wires more whenever that's pulled off. Because uh, of the way these wires are running. Whenever he takes everything off the frame, it looks like these two can stay. Because they just... I don't know. Be able to see that better once this thing starts coming apart. I can't get the back door open right now. Uh, but looking at this wire color here, so this is like an aqua. Somebody's using something as a ground or, man, I don't know. Uh, but this is like, that's a license plate light I know, but I can't see what color it is. It's like aqua something, unless it's been painted because this may have been sprayed and that faded. It's a reverse light, it's upside down. Okay, I'm in the back now. Looking at wire colors. Yeah, it's very brittle. This outer sheath is very brittle. I can't tell what that. There's some kind of an aqua. And I don't know, is this ground? And then you have the side marker light. That looks like it's white with a black stripe again. That's that factory ground. Oh, uh, this. Looks like it's white with a, a green with the white stripe, I mean. And that goes back and runs down. No, runs over and then down. This is that grommet right there. And then I would imagine the same thing on this side. Reverse, so there's a reverse light, and that's a red with some kind of a stripe. Blue, black, some kind of a dark color. 
and then side marker light so it's the same thing looks like it's green the other one this wire is broken so it's not going in the back huh I don't even see where the wire is oh there so that's completely broken off from there it goes out and down and underneath let me climb back out. I don't see any other wires. There's just the door wire up there. This goes down. Still can't tell where that I still can't see. But there's a wire that comes out of there. I have no idea what it goes to. So when we're putting this back together, if there's a wire that we can't find that it goes to, but it's dangling down beneath the center seat. So there's these wires here that run. Oh, they follow. Hey. Okay, so those wires go back underneath the gas tank, and the colors are it's probably fuel level. Does it have a fuel level? Okay, it does have a fuel level. Maybe what that is, but that's blue with a white stripe, and well, that's very brittle outside sheathing. blue with a white stripe and something else but that goes up and up and up behind the dash so I don't know all right now on to interior wiring that I can see uh, high beam so there's high beam down here push button uh, so there's just three wires that come in and they come up from the bottom I can't even tell what colors those are they're faded they all look green I think they've been sprayed over so I would mark those somehow all I can say is the uh, the connector with the red on the tip is on the right side and the two with the blue are on the left side. Uh, I can't even tell what those wire colors are. I'll have to make a note of those whenever we pull them out. Looking underneath, the connector somebody tapped into looks like this. It connects up here. And then my dad said the wiper motor still worked whenever the battery's connected. But gonna look over those wires anyway so this is a red wire it looks like it goes back 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 yeah so that wire goes back to the interior light and then it so it goes up through this little hole behind the um, sun visor it splits off of the harness it actually goes in here So however this snakes down, it comes out probably down here somewhere. Um, and the rest of this little wire bundle, the wire harness goes over, over, and it looks like it splits off only at the motor over here. And then the motors come off where they go through. This one jumps off of that one. There's one motor that turns both blades. Anyway, that's it for this. I'm going to start taking the uh, this front panel off. The front panel around the headlights, uh, header panel, I think it's called. All right, this is the FJ with the whole front off, and we got most of the stuff just connected from the engine. Um, over, so the fuel line, uh, fuel line busted whenever we're pulling that off, and just have that other end capped off right now. Most of these bolts broke. Um, even though we heated them up and sprayed them with PB Blaster, a lot of them broke whenever we were pulling them off. Uh, so it'll have to be drilled out maybe. There's a small access hole underneath in the side of the frame uh, on that side, so I could probably pull it out that way. Didn't find any more wires that uh, didn't know where they went because I traced that out really well earlier in the video. The emergency brake cable is a little weird. I thought that was a, a speedometer cable until I traced it up in the engine, and then I double-checked myself and triple-checked myself. But that goes down and it connects to the drive shaft on the back side of the transfer case. 
So it looks like some of the choke cables are placed over here uh, where it comes out of the firewall. That was the, the wire that I found that goes to here that I didn't know what it went to earlier. Uh, and the original one, so this is the one that was on it and this is the one that was pulled off and I'm pretty sure that's the, that was the old choke cable. We'll probably find out more whenever we get under the dash. Uh, the clutch system was completely dry whenever we pulled that off. It looks like the same type of slave cylinder that was on my 95 Toyota truck. I'm not sure if it's the same one that can be used. And also all the 10 millimeter bolts broke on the fender. They go through the fender. They were all different sizes. There were eight millimeter head screws with 10 millimeter bolts on the back and other little square nuts that are supposed to be weld on nuts uh, that would be welded onto the fender. Those were, uh, those were broken off. And then for the main shift lever, not the transfer case, but for the main shift lever, uh, it's like a, it's like an old school bulb assembly with a little J hook. So you have to press down the collar around the outside uh, and then turn it counterclockwise so that it shifts, so that it releases, and then the whole lever comes out. And this is it after we got the body panels, the engine, transmission, transfer case, all of that stuff, all that stuff pulled out. We broke a lot of the bolts when we were pulling off the fenders. Uh, broke a lot of the bolts in general, uh, whether we were heating them up or whether we were using PB Blaster on them, we broke a lot of them. Uh, we had to cut the headers off uh, at the at the pipe. The exhaust pipe wasn't uh, wasn't really letting us unbolt it, and then that it's been it's been patched there anyway. But these aren't these aren't stock. We're gonna try to find a stock uh, the stock exhaust manifold and just get rid of those get rid of those headers. They're rusted through anyway. Uh, but the back doors came off these screws we managed to heat them up and then hammer uh, hammer a, a p3 phillips bit onto it and then uh, crack it loose we broke off one i think and there was another one the inside of it stripped out i managed to put the vice grips on it uh, for the door the door hinges getting those off i think we broke off one on this side and one on that side and it was both the same location one i think it was the low one uh, like right here on this corner and then the same uh, on the front so no wait sorry uh the one here so this one broke and then uh, the very bottom one on the upper hinge broke and then the same thing on the other side the very bottom on the other i don't know if water catches there and then uh that's what causes it to break off but you can see like the rust there's a considerable amount of rust um i know my dad's got a uh a, a little a little welder in his shop so he's um he's gonna, just gonna bend up some steel and shape it up like, like it's supposed to be and then uh, patch a lot of these so grind out these big rust spots and weld another little panel in place sand it down we're going tomorrow morning to pick up the new panels uh, the new top so new fiberglass top um, new upper glass door and then the new side pieces they're tan they're they're painted uh, so we're gonna go pick those up so we don't have to restore those so he's gonna be restoring the um, the tub there's another wire here. So this went to the top of the gas tank. It just kind of uh, snapped in and there was a screw. This, this, it kind of, this is about the position that it sat in on top of the gas tank. Um, so fuel level sending unit. It goes up to the gas gauge. And then I'm assuming, yeah, this is ground. Because that, this one is the, the screw down one. So this is black, or it's white with a black stripe. And then that's still sitting about in the same place it was the other day. There's the, the rear heater. Uh, there's like a little heater that uh, that these pipes connect to. That is that was not um, it was not on the vehicle when we were pulling everything out. It wasn't there. And then we had a good little laugh. There were some vice grips that looked like they had been down there for like 15 years, but they were <laughs> they were clamped onto this bolt on the bottom in the wheel well it looked like a bracket there was so much mud caked onto it it was just it's i thought it was a bracket a lot of these bolts we broke off uh removing and the ones that we didn't break off uh like this one we had to grind it down so we'll have to he'll have to pound that out later probably heat it up with the torch and then uh and then pop it through Pulling the engine with those headers is why we had to cut them off the uh, the exhaust. Pulling the engine with the headers ended, ended up, uh, it bent this a little bit. You can see the original condition wasn't bent like this. Uh, earlier in the video, it was a little bit different than that. And there's a couple of these bolts in the frame that ended up breaking off, like uh, that one there and that one there. 
and that was what was mounted there. So the fender mounted there, and then on this side, I think the same ones broke off. So you have one there, one there. Uh, so two on each side. So it'd probably be easier to like, drill a little pilot hole in and then tighten the bolt so that it pushes it into the frame and then it just gets in there. But, uh, getting the body off, he's going to wait a little bit and get the body off. The rubber mounts that this sits on uh, there and then they're completely wasted away on this side. Uh, they're just cracked. So this one has two, uh, two little rubber spacers between the, the body and the frame. Uh, and that one has one. But it's just unbolting that, that. Uh, there's two in the back that are underneath. They're under here. And then there's one about right here. It's in the middle. Uh, and those are the only mounts. So it's loosening that, lifting this off the frame. And then he's going to roll the frame into his, I think he's going to roll the frame into his shop. And then put the body, uh, put the body out in another place. Uh, so disconnecting this this top glass, there were four wires, five wires that come down here, and they connect here. So all these went up to the wiper motor. Uh, so these five wires I just disconnected. They ran through this hole here. There's a little rubber, a uh, little rubber tube that goes through. So when those wires are disconnected, you can just pull them straight up through here. And they're still connected to that front windshield assembly. Oh, coming off this back door. So this is one of the doors that we're not replacing. Coming off of this back door, there was a uh, there was a ground wire that was connected to the little license plate light assembly that was going over here, and it was just bolted in right there where that is. Um, I, I just cut that off. That's they might have just done that just for a better ground. It might not have been grounding good where it was. But you can see this paint is still burnt here where we were heating these. We're heating the screws up to loosen them up. And then this door that was here, along the bottom, there was somebody had riveted in, uh, you can see earlier in the other video, I, I didn't point it out, but somebody had riveted in a plate that we're thinking just covered a huge rust hole. Uh, we're thinking that's all that was. That little under seat uh, compartment, so that's still intact. That's uh, it, it didn't really get a lot of water in it, so there's no rust under there, um, no major rust under there. It still opens up. Hinges still work like they're supposed to. It's just kind of dusty, dirty. Uh, the back just had a little bit of water that was in it, but it rusted out on the back side just like that. Uh, that rust is over there. Everything else is just a dust, old spark plug. Some heater hose. I pulled out that ugly antenna that was over there, that old CB antenna that was mounted to the side. Uh, so we're gonna have to weld in a little uh, little patch on that and then this uh, I think this is the turn signal uh, the turn signal left to right uh, that little knobs broken off at the tip thanks a lot for watching if you did watch this far then please like subscribe comment if you want to see updates on this then I know it's gonna be a while before I can record new updates but um, hey look for them uh, look for look for the updates and then there should be a considerable amount of work done by the time I do another video on this so yeah uh, thanks a lot for watching and God bless you guys Warm. <laughs> Let me this one.